after a long day on the mountains and in the arenas, the fans and athletes are probably looking for a place to unwind, and that includes our Rennie Knott. Yes, yeah, somehow <laughs> Rennie managed to spend his afternoon at a craft brewery, and he gets to call this work. Rennie, I am so jealous. You know how much I love craft beer, so you got to tell us how it was. Good morning. <laughs> Don't be jealous about this at all because I didn't get a chance to taste it. After all, I was on the clock at the time. I'm not buying it. I'll be off the clock in about a half hour, so maybe I'll try it then. I don't know. We'll talk about that later. You know what the old saying is, all work and no play makes Johnny a dull boy. So when it comes to unwinding after work, if you are of age, folks here in Pyeongchang, South Korea, can now do what we do in the United States. That's unwind with a craft beer. In a building that's decades old, there's something new. Bud Namu. That's the name of the beer Rank Moore is brewing in South Korea. If you go Korean, you say Bud Namu. So how does a guy from Australia end up setting up shop here? Honestly, I was here for a stopover uh, on my way back from Germany one day, and I just, uh, I had the beer, and I thought it was bad, and I mm. thought I could do it better. Believe it or not, the craft beer scene is new in the region. We were probably one of the first 10 craft breweries to exist in the country. Um, and a year before we opened up, you couldn't even open a craft brewery here. It was against the law. Although Rakemore comes from another place. Down there is basically where we mix all the ingredients together. So we, we get the hops, we get the uh, malt, we get the water, uh, and we, we mix it all together down there. He is leaning on the Korean culture for the taste in his brews. When we find something that we like and, and uh, uh, we, we kind of grow that and, and, and we get something and in the end, it's, I think, unique. There are six flavors. The pine city is Gangneung uh, city slogan. Yeah, so we put some pine needle in this beer. And apparently, the beer is in demand. In this brewery here, we can put out 5,000 liters of beer a week. They're having a tough time keeping up with the supply. At the moment, we can make uh, we can sell more beer than we can make at the moment. Wow. It definitely has a bit of a sweeter flavor than I think most North American beers. Um, personally, I like it. But Rakemore has some bad news for those hoping to get a taste outside of South Korea. That's good. While his beer seems to be a success, there are no plans for going global. I think that you that that, that local is key. It keeps it fresh. It keeps it interesting. It keeps it new. It's pretty cool that he wants to keep his beer with a Korean flavor to it to really appeal to the people here. By the way, the name of the beer means willow in Korean. Hmm, interesting point there. Ali, that's the story here live for now in Pyeongchang. Some of the events are letting out as I speak. A lot more folks making their way to the exits. I'll have more for you from the gains coming up a bit later. Back to you for now. Looking forward to that. I just wonder if you can bring some of that craft beer and your luggage on the way home for us. <laughs> Put it in a flask. No? <laughs> uh, what? All right. Uh, no, I can't because my, my bags are already overweight as is. Huh. Uh, you know, I had to bring enough clothes for a month, so uh, no space. Well, it depends on how dedicated you yeah. are, Ray. <laughs> how much he misses you, right? <laughs> all right, we'll see you in the next half. I'll put it all in my belly. <laughs>